I'm John Salona. I'm speaking today on making magic with engineered decisions, data, and processes, a hospital operations center. Let's dive right in. I approach this topic as an engineer, attorney, management consultant, and expert in decision analysis with my first textbook out in 1986, my most recent out in 2016, and then my latest book out just this year has a chapter on ethics. So we're going to take this in three pieces. And first of all, why does the opportunity exist and persist? Consider the factors driving health care. First is broken decision making. If we look at the roles in a decision, in a normal decision, the person evaluates the alternatives and makes the decision, pays the cost, and suffers or enjoys the consequences. In healthcare decisions, the doctor evaluates and decides, the ins employer, insurer, or the government pays, and the patient suffers or enjoys the consequences, and each could be working on different incentives. Next. Fear of death or disability. People are not in a normal state of mind making these decisions. There's also the wrong metaphor. People become confused between organisms and mechanisms. Your body is not like a car you can take into the shop and have the doctor fix it. Then there's the healthcare culture, which was driven by a tradition from the Middle Ages of clericals practicing health care and their job was healing the soul as well as the body that persists to this day in the notion of the doctor knows best. Then there's liability rules. Defensive medicine sadly tends to lead to worse decisions and worse outcomes, just the contrary of what it's aimed at. Payer and tax rules, as we've said, distort the incentives. And then there's demographics, increasing age and girth, which lead to increasing incidence and acuity of disease. Meanwhile, the technology and complexity of care is exploding. The standard of care 50 years ago was the doctor and nurse were going to be very careful. Today, if you look at an intensive care unit, there are five or six different systems hooked up to the patient, any one of which could kill the patient, and there's a complex team of people trying to coordinate on the care. This all comes together with the regulatory and administrative overhead and lack of engineered processes to create excess outcome variability and the crazy costs that we see. If we look at healthcare technology, the technology is space age, but the business processes are still handwork and resemble medieval craft work. Literally, caregivers are still moving patients around by hand. This creates the situation that we see today, which makes it so difficult to innovate. In sum, healthcare has emerged from a tradition of clerical led healthcare when the scientific revolution forcibly broke into healthcare in the late Middle Ages, driven by the non cleric barber surgeons. But healthcare managed to miss entirely the industrial revolution of engineered, designed, and optimized processes. Hence this metaphor for understanding the barriers to change in healthcare. Next, let's look at engineering decisions, data, and processes, big data team processes. Specifically, to tackle this, we use decision analysis, which was developed to address the problem of making high quality decisions under uncertainty. Its roots are in decision theory, economics, cognitive psychology, and system engineering, 
and these were pulled together by Ron Howard at Stanford University and Howard Rafa at Harvard University. We build the decision basis in pieces, considering alternatives, information and beliefs, and preferences. These go into a logical model, which helps shed light on which decision is best and why, but the eventual outcome is still uncertain. And we use a different definition. We say that good decisions are logically consistent with what is known at the time, also called the decision basis. A good outcome is what you hope will happen. One big problem, and especially with big data, is what does the data tell us and how do we make the best use of it? Plus, we have no data from the future, which is what we're really interested in, and the whole purpose of a decision is to change the future data. Otherwise, what's the point? So we look for a connection between the information, including big data, and the decision. And a decision analyst would say, information which doesn't change the decision has no value. This is contrary to the common view that information is always available. Likewise, we build understanding in stages. In basis development, we develop the alternatives, information, probability assessments, the risk tolerance and discount rate. In deterministic structuring, we get the ranking of the uncertainties and we identify the most important uncertainties. In probabilistic evaluation, we get a recommendation and a rationale for it. And lastly, in basis appraisal, we look at what is the recommendation and the rationale for it, and does it seem to make sense, and if not, why? So this whole process is iterative, where we go through the steps as many times as we need to make sure that at the end we have a simple, coherent, and credible explanation of what we propose to do and why it's the best. Decision analysis is standard and required in a number of high-risk, high-investment industries. Before they develop a field at Chevron or Exxon, before they develop a drug at Genentech, Pfizer, or Merck, before they choose which kind of airplane to develop at Boeing, and even before they develop a consumer product at Procter & Gamble, they use decision analysis. Likewise, decision analysis provides a more focused frame for effective big data team processes. In the process of figuring out what are the decisions we need to make and why, we ask the questions that are key for a big data team process, such as, what decisions are being made? How could data change those decisions? Do we have those data or need to develop the system to create it? In the structuring phase, we prototype required data collection and reporting systems and design the feedback between data, decisions, and outcomes. Lastly, in the basis appraisal stage, we ask, is the data informing the decisions we need to make? and can we measure its value? This linkage between the decisions and the big data team project and the results of that is key for making best use of, first of all, our biological computer, which consists of two parts, sort of a programmable coprocessor. We have our intuitive supercomputer, or fast thinking, which is fast, easy, intuitive, and works well most of the time, goes astray with novelty, complexity, or uncertainty, uses subtle complex reasoning processes that are difficult to trace, governs emotions, trust, empathy, and action, and is specialized for understanding other creatures, but is subject to motivation, willpower, emotion, and stress. Thankfully, nature has equipped us with a logical coprocessor, or slow thinking, it's slower and more effort to invoke, but less prone to error. It requires concentration and focus at the risk of frame blindness or solving the wrong problem. It uses transparent logical reasoning, but does not lead to action unless trusted or persuasive. 
the way we work naturally without thinking about it is our intuition supplies the frame for thinking about logically and conducting thought experiments from which we get insight that feeds back into intuition to create a synthesis that ultimately drives action. If we contrast that with the human-made computer, it has only a logical processor which exactly follows the instructions written for it. Advances in execution speed have enabled extremely complex instructions and instructions to write instructions, but the computer cannot deviate from the written instructions or objectives or recognize when they should not apply. Even if they should not, that leads to action because a computer has no intuitive supercomputer to ask itself, do my instructions make sense and am I doing the right thing here? So as one of the co-authors on my most recent book, Vince Cerf, put it, a bug is when the computer does what you tell it to do instead of what you want it to do. Let's apply all this to a hospital operations center. And you might ask, what is a hospital operations center? A state-of-the-art hospital operations center would provide real-time actionable data on critical hospital functions, coordinate admissions, scheduling, resource allocation, and patient monitoring, manage hospital network, equipment, and software performance, manage and monitor patient physiological functions, provide situational awareness of hospital-wide data, manage near-miss and adverse event data, and coordinate emergency crisis response. Hospital systems are currently unconnected and constrained by their own requirements, leaving caregivers frantically running around to fill in the gaps. The result is a highly trained, skilled, and motivated staff doing their best to deliver high-quality care, but they often feel overwhelmed and frustrated. Patients greatly appreciate the extra efforts caregivers make on their behalf, but they suffer the results of huge and systemic inefficiencies, and the people and caregivers are at the mercy of the systems rather than the systems serving the people. Another way of stating these same core issues, patient satisfaction, staff satisfaction, safety efficiency and effectiveness which drive quality, cost of care. The system as we envision it would pull from existing systems to form an integrated means of managing patient care. To start, we need to find the minimum viable ecosystem to engineer and create the tangible benefits and drive evolutionary change on a larger scale. Identifying and engineering the needed big data support for the, the center and decisions is part of this effort. Possibly a neonatal intensive care unit or NICU uh, would be a candidate. These units are often the highest per square foot revenue in the hospital. One possible way to get started would be select site and manageable subsystems, begin design work to develop the system requirements, including the big data system requirements, build a prototype and run in parallel remotely with the actual NICU, build one at the site, and use learnings to develop additional employments. Our current status is we have identified a candidate NICU for the pilot effort and teams of medical professionals and system engineers. We are seeking funding opportunities to engineer and build the prototype, including grant opportunities. And if you have suggestions, please contact us Thank you for joining me today and we'll go to the Q&A portion.